here's the problem I'm having. So there's some serious slack in the steering here. So if I put my foot down on the on the uh, tire here, <clears throat> and then I reach up here and grab the steering wheel, I'm trying to get this in the shot here. But so if I turn the steering wheel, as you can see, the tire does not move. I got all this slack here. And so I could turn it that much. Notice the tire is not moving at all. So it's like some serious slack in the steering. And, and if you listen, it's kind of a rubbery, some sort of squeaky sound going on here. But yeah, you can move it pretty much about that whole distance without nothing happening. So it's pretty, pretty bad. It's pretty dangerous. I just discovered how to do this here. So you don't even need to have a helper or anything. You can basically test it right here. Um, you just put your knee against the... The tire here so you can, you can feel if it's moving or not and then you put your left hand on the steering wheel and basically I put the camera down here that's the problem area right there so if if I turn the steering wheel see all that that's happening there there's a whole bunch of like f flex going on there so the tires are not moving at all I'm moving the steering wheel back and forth you see what's happening there that's supposed to pivot on that that rod right there, there's a rod in there and there's a bushing. It's supposed to to move the actual tie rods, not, you know, it's supposed to be a pivot point, not a wobble point. So you see the whole thing is just basically flexing and wobbling, shaking around. And that's my problem right there. So if I keep turning it further, it eventually, uh, eventually will, will work, but I have to... Let's see, there's all that crazy flex going on there. That's crazy. So I think it's safe to say that that's our problem. Okay, so here's the part out of the car. And this is how it looks right here. So um, what I had to do, um, well, first all you need is a 17 millimeter socket and 24 millimeter socket to get the, to get the nuts off here. And then you have to remove the cotter pins with a pair of pliers. So that's pretty simple. And easy to do but was what was more of a pain though was to get those tie rods off of here so initially I tried using a, what a generic tie rod remover puller tool and um, this particular bottle just didn't quite have the range I needed and it just didn't quite fit on there very well and all I ended up doing was basically pinching the boot and pushing grease out which is what we have right here so so don't don't even don't mess with that just throw that away don't try that the better method was to use a three inch um, puller three-prong puller and you just, you just get it in there and basically um, on each of these and that works really well to get those off so that was the better method there and then I used a four-inch puller here to get this one off of here so yeah it was on there um, as you can see this is what it looks like so so there's a bush there's a bushing with an outer sleeve I and mean, that's what's on here right now and then this is the um, the other part of it so like there's the inner sleeve and then there's the rubber part which as you can see right here this was all worn and basically just you know just gone most for the most part mostly just completely gone hardly anything remaining of the actual rubber part of it so so this piece came out separately and then th this piece was still um kind of almost seized on there so i had to pull it off here separately as you can see there's a lot of dirt and stuff in there so anyway, that's what we got, um, and uh, here's what it looks like down here. So that's what we have remaining there. So there's just a rod right there, uh, bolted to the car, or directly attached to the car there. And we have our other connectors hanging out, ready to be put back in. So now it leaves us with a question as to what we want to do here. Now I've seen that you can get the replacement bushing. So it does, you know, as it would be this, you know, this outer outer uh, sleeve, and then it would be the inner sleeve, and it would have a, you know, a brand new piece of rubber. It will come as a unit. So you could basically press press this out, and then press that in. Um, the only problem with that idea, I'd have to buy the part and then wait um, a while. Um, it's like sixty five bucks, at least from one place that I that I uh, priced it, plus um, shipping, which would probably be about twenty bucks, probably. So it'd probably be about eighty five bucks. So basically for a piece of uh, rubber. Um, although I, it looks, it, it appears that this um, bushing is probably original to the car. It doesn't look like, there's no evidence that it's been replaced. So I mean, if it has made it some 20, 
five years or so, then I mean maybe I don't know. I don't know how long it lasted though. It could have been it could have been like this for like you know ten years ago. I really don't know. I mean I know I had it from the time I bought it, but um, it's had this this problem. So the so the other idea is um, I saw so I could buy that bushing and I could try it out. I could you know do that. But the thing is, that's going to take a little bit of time to buy it and wait around for the part to arrive. And then, I, like I said, I don't know if, how long that bushing is going to last. So what I got to thinking is that, well, we have an outer sleeve right here, already in here. We have the inner sleeve. We know that that fits. We know this fits. So it's really just a matter of infilling something other than the rubber. So the first step is to go ahead and remove this, um, this rubber material off of here. And so let me show you how it um, goes together here. So I've begun to take some of it off. You can see that this is how it, it this is basically how it goes in here. So very loose, but it still kind of goes in a little bit. But this gives us an idea of how much gap we need to fill. So that was enough uh, slack in there to, to cause all the problems I was having. So, you know, we want to make sure this is pretty tight. And so um, that gives us an idea there what we need. So I was looking at looking around the house here, and I've got some pipe left over from uh, this is some um, heavy duty uh, closet line um, or closet rod, I guess. So I put this in my master bedroom when I renovated it. So I did the whole uh, closet. So I had a whole bunch of leftover, and I was like, you know, this is some good solid pipe. I mean, what can I use this for? And so I kept it. So now we possibly have a use for it. So I think this is some going to be some pretty good, pretty good metal. You can see the thickness of that metal. I think it's going to work out pretty good for what we're doing right here. And chisel off as much of it as you can, such as so. And get it down to about like this right here. Get most of it off. And now we'll use the angle grinder. This uh, technique works really well. Use a vice grip to hold it. Now we'll just be able to go out there with our angle grinder and just grind away at it. Finish it off. So let's do that real quick. Okay, so we've been cleaning up all our parts and everything. I went ahead and put this back on the car, made sure it was nice and snug, and it is. It goes right in. Kind of cleaned up uh, both the existing rod and then this, this piece as well. So it wasn't in too bad shape. It just had some dirt in it, but um, came right out, cleaned up pretty nicely. Well, um, before final assembly, we'll load it, we'll pack this with some nice heavy grease and uh, put it in there, and that will probably make it real nice and tight at that point. But uh, anyway, that part is ready to go, and then I cleaned up this piece as well. And so I've cut our, our rod, our closet rod, which is interestingly, it's almost exactly the same size. Look at how close that is. That is really close to being almost the exact same size as the, uh, as the other piece here. But anyway, what we'll do now is we'll reduce this size down. We'll cut out a couple cuts on it to, to shrink it, and then we'll just simply crush it down. And that should hopefully get us pretty close to what we need. Okay, so here's what we have so far. I've inserted the, the inner sleeve into our metal, um, our new piece that we cut here. Um, obviously, I probably could have left a little bit on, more on there. I just kind of estimated what I needed. Um, it looks like I, you know, this is about how much I took off, so a little bit less. Probably didn't need that much um, to take off there. So it looks like right now, if you stick it in here, you can kind of see. It kind of goes right in there, so um, I think it's going to work out pretty nicely. And here it is, basically assembled. So we have a nice step on it right there. See how that steps down? That looks pretty good. So now all we have to do is weld it. Here's the finished product. I have to say I think it came out pretty nice. My welding is not the best in the world, clearly. But as long as it holds, it's not pretty, it doesn't have to be. But as long as it's functional. That's all I'm concerned about. So yeah, I've already test fitted it. Um, it slides right on. And here's what it looks like installed. I got fresh cutter pins in. Don't have to torque it down. Don't have to just get it, you know, nice and snug and not too much, not too tight. And then uh, put your cutter pins in, and uh, we're good to go. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you the difference now. So if I move the steering wheel, notice the tire down there. If I move the steering wheel about, about, about that much right there, nothing happens. There's a sti slight little bit of slack. It's only maybe like a quarter inch, but if you notice I move it just a little bit more, I notice how the tire is moving down there now. And of course, before I was doing this, nothing was happening, but you can clearly see now that the tire is moving quite, quite nicely. So there is like just a hair, but it's like maybe about that much right there. 
of slack in it. And considering all the links in the system, I would have, you know, I would think that's completely normal and healthy. But um, definitely no crazy eighth of a turn slack like before. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe if you did. Many more videos to come.